Thrust Systems Go. Clear for liftoff. What's up, everyone? Tyler Tambolin here, a.k.a. Totag and Tambo, back for another edition of the Monday PGA DFS First Look here on the Ship It Nation YouTube station. Do us a favor, if you're on your way in or just joining us for the first time, subscribe to the channel. It takes two seconds. You can get into the chat that way. It's free. All of our shows that we have on this channel here are free. You'll be able to get all access to all the other sports and channels and shows that we offer here. So do that. Hit the like button. We're always going to ask for that. We appreciate it. Thanks to everybody. Started a couple minutes early because I know everybody was in here earlier. Go collect early. That was my bad. I apologize. I bumped the time a half an hour, but I meant to bump it an hour and a half. I did post it out on X yesterday, but thanks to my guy, Lee. We've got a special guest with us here today. Our guy, Lee Aldrich, formerly of Fanshare Sports, does our course fit rankings. He's got his own tier rankings up on the site, breaking down everything. Lee, bring you in, man. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Appreciate you. And I think there's going to be a lot of questions people have coming your way as we get through this show yeah excellent yeah well happy to answer them and uh, happy to be here. and thanks for uh asking me to uh jump on it means a lot i know there's a lot of better people however there'd be more apt for it but uh no super excited to uh to jump in and uh, help out yeah appreciate it i wouldn't say better people there's lots of people out there great people and it's hard right that's a you know you you have something like this hoop is away this week we'd had it set up originally where i was on my 10-year anniversary during the players week he was gone this week so we got some fun here Planned out for you. Got my guy Alex Blickle coming over on Wednesday. He works over at FTN. He's got some golfing background of his own playing golf. So I think that's going to be another interesting one. But like our guy, Rin Shep, Rin Shepard, hashtag Shepard. He's in here already. Said course fit rankings have the gems right in the face. Love it. We'll talk about course fit rankings here in a second. But before we do, want to let everybody know another huge weekend over at the nation. So I'll recap it quickly. But shout out to our guy, Gary. Got the job done. Got to meet him back in 2021. I think it was ended up talking to him through the, you know, sort of the back end stuff going through, um, you know, playing DFS and joining different companies, things like that. But now here at ship, I'd love to have him. We were rooting him on all weekend. He was in that big heavy irons contest. He won a ticket into it. Might've won two. I know he for sure won at least one ticket into it, but ended up coming second full cam young on us there. 170 K in that tournament. He won another, I believe he already has some with the fantasy golf world championship. Got some other tournaments. I got another heavy irons tickets. So I'll be right back in the mix. Shout out to our guy, Q's Matt. You probably saw uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, he won the 50K in the showdown slate. Uh, this past weekend, he came first and second for another 35K. Bombino said he used the stone tool, Degenerate 75 stone tool. He got the job done with that for 555. Um, the 555 he won for 20K plus. Hoopster made another run in the 555. Speaking of that, he came third for 25K. Somebody said one good lineup and 18 bad. I felt like saying your name says DFS in it. Are you new here? That's how it works, right? You, you just got to get one up to the top. Sometimes the other all have to die for that to happen. But that to him, just so many though. Rex Harbody, 7,500. Max Manning, 33. X Durka, 33,000. Rio, shout out to our man. The guy does so much. We truly appreciate everything Rio does. I know everybody out there does that's a member. Been grinding all season, day and night, because he does all the showdown slates as well. Couldn't ask for someone better who literally lives lives the mantra that nobody cares work harder. He just goes to work, does his job, helps out tons of people in the Discord. Had a nice run in the Fantasy uh, Basketball World Championship for 60K. So congrats to him. Some more NBA winners. Kai Bush turned 80, to 80 bucks into 4,700. Kid Lightning, 1,700. Bader Bear, back-to-back night. Shout out to our guy Smarty, always providing the college basketball stuff in there. No charge, just does it. Such a good dude, always helping. He says he's going to be doing UFL in the streets. I know there's other sites out there selling UFL. He's going to have some stuff for you guys as well in there. So appreciate Smarty. Bader Bear went back to back, shipping over 900. And then our guy, Rob Mazika, lay the house RM, shipped the NASCAR. So shout out to Eric, all the good work he does in there on the NASCAR. If you guys want to get in, go to shipitnation.com slash join. You can use Hoop15 to lock in 15% off any membership. And that'll get you all the PGA stuff, including the course fit ranking. So Lee, let's talk about these. These have been incredible. I love them since back in the day at Fanshare when they were sort of closing out. You and I got together, chatted, said, hey, how can we make this work? Let's hook up, you know, and talk about you getting over to the site, getting your content, 
Can we get corset rankings? Can you do more? We ended up working it all out. Now you're here on a show with us as well. So again, appreciate that. But what is your take? Give the lowdown on these course fit rankings because I know myself over the swing season just absolutely crushed with them and they've still been on fire. There's wins and losses to them, same as always, right? People say, oh, well, this guy did good, but that guy did bad. Yeah, there's going to be ups and downs, but talk about these course fit rankings, my man. Yeah, so the course fit rankings uh, are just one more piece to the uh, puzzle to help you um, find value and see which players may play well that are due to be low owned, etc. And basically, it really is just a way of showing you which players are most suited to this course, which players aren't particularly suited to this course. So if you imagine that every player that was playing in the event was playing their absolute best golf that they could possibly play, uh, that's how well they should do uh, based on the uh, course fit rankings. So uh, the way I particularly like to, to use them, and as I say, they're just one piece of the puzzle. You obviously need to know about form and, and everything else. Um, but I build a lot of lineups each week, over 150 lineups each week, which means I'm going to need to get a lot of uh, low priced guys in there. And you can get some real value from the course fit rankings down at the uh, at the bottom end. And a lot of them are going to be super low owned. Uh, and then also on the flip side, if you're building a lot of lineups, you're going to have to take people out of your player pool. And sometimes that can be difficult because somebody's always got something going for them. Uh, if they rank low in the course fit rankings, then I can say, well, I've got to take a couple of people out of my player pool. So I'm going to take this player out or this player out. Uh, and, and that has worked particularly well, uh, particularly this season. Yeah, we're going to send it overseas for our guy, Lee. He's deserving of plenty of gear and more. We'll get him hooked up, but we try and take care of Lee the best we can. He's helping out by taking care of us. Again, appreciate you hopping on. I thought you brought up something really interesting there at, that actually just made something click in my head. That's why like, I like going through this stuff, and it'll probably help others out there, especially members that are using these course fit rankings. Again, they're right there on the site on top of the stone from our guy, Degenerate75, who, by the way, hopefully – Get an update this week. Always thinking about him. I know lots of thoughts and prayers. He's talked. We, him and I have been talking plenty. Uh, he's very appreciative of everybody that's reached out. So thank you guys so much. Keeping him in our thoughts and hopefully get an update sooner than later. But just to note here, like you said it, go in here. You get these course fit rankings. You said one thing that ties in with this. I've always said to people, they're not opinion based. Like they're not, you're not going out and saying, well, I think this guy should be this and I should be that. But when someone says, okay, Kevin Kisner pops up heavy in these course fit rankings. And we know he's horrible right now. He just has not been good. It's unfortunate. We want to see kids get back. It ain't no hobby. We want to see him out of the booth onto the course playing well. You always want to see that, but he's just not playing well right now. But to your point, it's what essentially, if they had their A game, how well would they fit this course? So feel free to skip someone just because they're number one or number five or whatever. That's based on what they should do here. It's not saying that they will. And again, nobody knows what will happen anyway. It's golf. There's variance. But to note it, I think that's a key way. If you can build a course fit rankings lineup based on guys that are in good form and pop and it's unique and it ties together all of the things we talk about through all of the other content, like the slate plan, where I might break down some roster construction that makes sense. Or if you go to uh, the education course and go into the PGA section and see some stuff there about roster construction or three max or whatever it might be, you can do that as well. So I think that was a really good point, Lee, because oftentimes we're having guys pop up that you're like, ah, screw that guy. I don't want to play him or it's really scary playing him, but maybe that'll make people feel a little bit better about passing on someone, even though they may be in the top five. It's not necessarily saying now is the time to play them. So anything else you can elaborate on? I know we've had some good courses this year where we maybe didn't have a lot of information and this has just been a way to get a leg up, right? Uh, Puerto Rico you talked about was another one where not much information. I know during the swing season, there was some. Anything else on these course fit rankings before we move on? Yeah, I think they're particularly useful uh, in weeks where the event's being played at a new course and uh, there's no course history or, or anything to go on. So uh, I think in those weeks, it's even more important to, to kind of get some kind of course fit rankings to, to give you some kind of edge. And and I guess really that's what they are. They're, they're an edge, a small part of the uh, puzzle that should help you uh, build better lineups. Yeah. I really love it. I think like other people said it, you know, coming up to, uh, where was it here? Even Sean, he said, I usually build an entire lineup with the course fit rankings and it usually works out really well. I know last week I had some of those or some six of sixes that came through on them. So I definitely appreciate that. Camara bro knows hit those likes. We do appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. If you can, we did give away our six month annual membership for hitting 6,000. We're already 
to just under, I think just over 6,100 since the other day or last week. So keep it rolling. When we get to 7,000, we're going to give away another membership, depending on what's going on at that time. It'll probably be an annual PGA, but assuming we get there somewhere around the master's time, I think that would be the place to do it. Colin asks, does Shippen do any upcoming MLB content? Great question. So uh, I'll show it here while we're there. It's already been in the works. Uh, worked on it all last week, actually. So once I got back from vacation, wanted to get on it right away. So we'll have, same as last season, we didn't have a full season of PGA, but I know people really love the pitcher rankings. Those were phenomenal, sometimes for finding gems, but also for maybe fading a popular stack, knowing that a pitcher was popping on those, you can move to different bats. So that was a piece of the puzzle. The hitter rankings, the stack rankings uh, done differently, almost like our, our NFL ones, where you can start, sort of see the ownership that goes with them, as well as what the total salary cost is. So you're knowing that obviously the, you know, everybody's going to say the stack rankings, the Braves or the Dodgers or whoever the big bats are. This will tell you a little bit different, much like we did during the NFL season where the stack rankings really crushed. And then starting lineups, we're working on a hybrid with that to convert it to a stone where you have a way just to dig in because the advanced starting lineups is where you can really find some good stuff for single entry, three max. We'll still have our normal slate plan, core reports, all of that, plus the projections and ownership as well, which there's more on that to come soon. Also, quickly want to hop over and then we'll keep it rolling, trying to get everything done in 10 minutes. Logos for you guys. We did post the logo contest into the Discord. It will be live on the logos page under the three dots here soon this week, but we will post the entire thing. I know other sites are doing a one-time giveaway, a one-time free roll. We are committed to giving away $500 minimum every single month of the year for the next year. So we're giving away $6,000 for rocking the logo. The way it's going to work is quite simple. Again, if you're in the Discord, you can check it out. This is for anybody though. You can do this for free. If you rock the logo, tag us on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, at Ship It Nation. We're going to do a random draw for $200 every single month for somebody that posts the logo and tags at Ship It Nation. We're going to do another one. That's that's $100 profit to $49.99 profit. For $5,000 and above, we're going to give away another $200 profit or $200 giveaway on top of it. And then somebody who posts in the discord under hashtag ship it, where our screenshots go, going to give away another hundred of them. So $500 plus you can win all three draws. It's random. It's not, you only win once. So uh, it's unlikely, but keep in mind, not a lot of people are going to be winning over 5,000 unless you're playing at that level. We want more people playing at that level or having that opportunity to get up there and play rocking our logo. So over $500 a month, because there's going to be other bonuses and things that go with it but at least $500 a month for the logo contest to give away. And then uh, lastly, the big giveaway from last week, Lee, we got to get to 5,000 followers. So we're only 14 shy. Once that happens, we'll be giving away the $509 annual membership. Let's get to it, Lee. We'll hop in. Before we get into the pricing and the first look here, what do you want to talk about? Two minutes here, quick. Go through just this course, what you know about this event, anything you have on your mind before we get into the pricing tiers. Yeah, so it's a memorial park, isn't it? I think they've played here for three years now um, at the Houston Open. And, yeah, some notable uh, course history, isn't there? There's a few guys that come through with uh, who have had good finishes the last couple of years that's been played here, especially uh, Scotty Scheffler, who I've got a feeling we might uh, talk a little bit about today. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then another player that, that I'm excited to see how he is priced up uh, who has got good course history here is Joel uh, Damon. Um, so I'm interested to see uh, what his price is uh, going to be this week. And then a couple of others there like uh, Alex Morley and Aaron Rice. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing some prices. So it's a long par 70 course uh, on these new Bermuda style uh, greens that, that they have. Um, so, yeah, quite quite a rare course, really, uh, this week, just with it being so long and, and a par 70. Um, but a good one. Got an exciting finish to it. Got a couple of, from memory, a couple of drivable par fours to finish with and a short par three and, and a par five there. So it's going to be a really exciting end to uh, to the week. Yeah, and I like Ross here. Back to those course fit rankings quick, and then we'll go to Scotty Scheffler conversation. Said he hit that round one leader bet because of the course fit rankings. Didn't really want him in DFS, but kind of a way to sort of hedge out of it and say, look, if he does show up and these rankings are right, let me get paid for that. And that's kind of a way you can go about it too. So lots of different things that you can do. So let's talk about this one, Lee. Let's go into the Scotty Scheffler conversation right away because we'll do Zalatoris up to Scheffler. And we got some separation. 
I will say that 1100 bucks, um, you know, to, to go there. Sorry. What is he? 10, nine. So two, 2,100 bucks finally. So that's even better. Quick math here early in the morning, but or early afternoon, but 13 K I was expecting like 12.5 to 12, eight. They actually put the full 13 on him. What's your first take here on Scotty Scheffler? I, I will cheat a little bit because I, you know, somebody mentioned this earlier, so it was kind of spoiled, but we do have the 5k range. I just don't know the difference of, did they give us more in the 7k range this week? Did they give us everyone slammed at the bottom again? We'll find that out when we get down to the bottom, but what's your take on Scotty here? Yeah, I was the same. I was thinking about uh, 12,600. So I am surprised to, to see him that high. Is that the highest that there's ever been in a golf event? 13, it, it might be for this. I actually don't think. I believe we've seen higher in like the tour championships and stuff, but I do uh, I do know it's much higher than what we're used to. And it's finally some separation with $2,100 in the difference yeah. between him and yeah. going down to Clark, the Gala, Zal. I guess that's another conversation in a second, but go ahead. Keep rolling with Scotty. But yeah, it's, it won't put me off playing him. Um, I think that's a fair price and mm -hmm. I'd still probably look to be overweight on Scottish Sheffield like that mainly because I'm going to back myself to find value further down. Uh, so I'm quite happy to, uh, to pay that for him and uh, to, to be overweight on him and then see what uh, value I can find further down the list. Yeah. I'm not going to cheat too much, but like right here, just guys that don't really win. Right. Like, uh, you know, some of them have wins within here, but like, you know, Hostler, Rye, Rogers, Jagger, like those guys, not all of them, but just to say like, that's sort of the setup you're seeing. So really, that's my second point, Lee, I want to bring up is you put Scotty in. I don't know if 13K was enough because, well, mm -hmm. it's not me complaining. Like, again, at least they got to a bigger number. It's you still have 7,400 left. If yeah. you even skip over some of these guys, I'm not going to keep going down, but like just to show, I mean, you can fit a bunch of these guys in or another 9K or whatever. You'll get away with it. Either way is my point. No problem. And what is your take on like Clark, Thigala, Zal? What, what is the difference? Because I, I would say the next question here, I would say probably un maybe under, but I think 40 is legit possibility here. It's still very easy to get to him. And again, remember what people always say is, you know, he's 13K at that big boy price. He's got to win. No, he doesn't. It's the Gala, Clark, Zalatoris, Finau, uh, Hoagie, Jagger, Hostler. He doesn't have to do shit. There's like seven guys there that could do nothing. And so then he just could be in the mix. Like Xander, last week, Lee, I brought this up in the Discord earlier. While Xander made a run on Sunday, a very nice run, by the way, I, you know, someone teased it there. I, I forget who it was. I, I loved it. They said uh, Xander should try playing like this when he's actually in contention, not when he's <laughs> out of it. But I mean, he, he could have had a lot more wins under his belt if that's the case. But just the way it goes, that's golf. But I will say, even if Xander didn't make that run on Sunday, there was definitely potential for him. Like, let's just say it was half of what he did. There was still potential for him to show up in these lineups because nobody else did shit. Like there was guys, Burns, uh, Speed out. J JT way down the board, like just guys that didn't show up him, all those guys, they did nothing. So it, it's, again, it's not about necessarily just what the price is and what they need to do for the price. It's what does everybody else do around them and what comes with them at that price. If a bunch of 7K guys crush and a bunch of these 10K guys do bad, even if they make the cut, Scotty's still in the mix and, and can do just fine with his normal stuff. So just making another case for Scotty, not like it's needed, but just to note that there at 13K, did you have any thoughts on Clark? down to Zalatoris, just the three guys that are sort of trailing him. Yeah, I think a more important question is, are those prices too high for those guys, rather than Sheffler's price being too high? Is 10900 mm -hmm. too high for Clark? Is 10300 too high for Thagala? I feel like it is. Uh, I can easily see th those next seven guys on that list, eight guys on that list, not doing any anything this week. So I think you've got more questions to ask about whether – you want to pay up for those guys. I mean, Wyndham Clark possibly, but well, that's a lot, 10,900 uh, for Clark, but I'm not sure I'm I'm happy paying that much for, uh, for everyone else. They've got question marks, all of them. Yeah, good point too. These guys get dragged along in the price to get close to Scott, even though, like I said, 2,100 plus separation through that range it's still, they're, they're getting dragged. Like they're not going to put Scotty 13 and then put all these guys in the nine K range and just say, deal with it. That's just not how they work it. So if that is your take or your feeling, I think there's a bigger discussion to be had. I know it's only uh, a first look, but I'll give a couple things just because it gets brought up all the time as well. Uh, there's, you know, some people out there that have the broken DraftKings app or the broken DraftKings site and it's a all interfade button. And again, you'll know, he'll be, you know, that he'll be 40%. 
let's say that's the number, but you know, I'm just making it up, but it's somewhere in that range vicinity that you, there's ways to do it differently, right? Like once we figure out what that looks like, what is the chalk? So Wednesday when I'm doing the in-studio show with Pat Mayo and we go, okay, what's the chalky Scotty lineup? You'll be able to see what a Scotty lineup that everybody else has looks like. You guys may be able to figure it out now if you messed around with it. I'm looking with Lee for the first time, but I'm just saying once you find that out, there's ways to play Scotty differently and all of that. But I do think that in general, you could still play underweight and have better Scotty lineups than the field. You could pay, you could play 60% and get away with it because you know, 40, you don't have to double to 80 at that point. I understand people say you might as well just lock it. I think people will lock him. I think people will fade him. I think people will just play the field and move on. Do you have any early thoughts on that besides your point of maybe these guys aren't good enough and maybe he just is the guy? Do you, would you think about like 20 max locking him? Well, there are still question marks about Sheffler. It was only uh, only really the last couple of weeks that the, the put has worked. So it wasn't really working before that. So it's not like there are no question marks around Sheffler. Right. Um, but I'll be overweight, but I won't, I won't be getting carried away with it. I think if he's going to be 40, I'll, I'll be around 60%. Yeah, some more time. I mean, Ben was talking here at a quick play around, didn't even hate the options with Chef and Wyndham. So we'll look at that in one second. And Pam brings up a great point here. Says the Gal and Zal, this is what I talk about all the time, right? Like when you put um, Scheffler in, you have an average of 7,400, but you need five golfers. When I put in Thigala and Finau, I got the same average. I can still go to the same pool I was just in, but now I only need to fill out four. It's like, how good is Scheffler on your radar? We know how good he is. We, we've watched it. It's been insane. But just to note that, going back to what Ben said, though, he mentioned like Scotty and Wyndham. 6,500. So yeah, you're pushing it there. But again, I haven't seen what's down there. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, if you were picking one out of these three and then we'll move on, Lee. Clark, Thigala, Zal, any favorite within that range? And then we'll go to the nine case. So yeah, I mean, it's just the first look at the minute. I, I'm going to have to do my research for the rest of the week. But as is the first look, I think I would take the chance with Zalatoris. Yeah, where, why might you take the chance with Zalatoris? Any tools out there that like him? Well, he fits <laughs> extremely well to uh, to Memorial Park, yeah. So uh, so it's a great course for him. Um, and there's quite a bit of a saving there between Clark and Zalatoris. So, yeah, I mean, based a lot on course rankings at the minute, uh, yeah, it would be Zalatoris. Yeah, Lee, Lee's going to give away all the secret sauce. I think that's what he's trying to do here. So he's going to give away all the best plays and talk about it that way. But we'll keep it rolling. Let's go to the 9K range. We got uh, Siwoo Kim, Jason Day, Alexander Noren, Keith Mitchell, who someone said it earlier. It, it's pretty right here. Mondo. Shout out to Mondo. Mitchell was horrid yesterday. I know it can happen on a certain round. His putting was about the worst I've ever seen. Not a good sign. One round. I think I would lean to... The second, uh, sort of the part you said about that versus the other. Think about the pressure, sleeping on the lead, two-stroke lead at that, and then all of that. It's just the way it goes. So um, we'll roll from there. But Siwoo down to Tom Hoagie. What's your thoughts here in this range? First look. Um, so, yeah, I quite like um, – how, how far down are we going? Just the nine case. Hoagie up to Siwoo. Nine case. Or, sorry, uh, Pina, uh, yeah. I apologize. Sorry, I forgot about Tony Finau and his uh, 25 grand a week expenses that everyone got extremely tilted over. The fact that he brings the whole family around and decides to pay for everything. So I'd love to play Finau and I probably will play Finau. Um, he let me down last week. I, I thought he was going to go really well last week um, and he didn't. But in 80% of the 10 rounds he's played here at Memorial Park, he has gained strokes on the uh, field. Um, so I think he's going to be, he's probably worth another go, uh, reluctantly. Uh, Jason Day played 12 rounds here over the last three years at Memorial Park, and uh, he's gained strokes on the field in 75% of those rounds. So I think that that's where I would be uh, heading in this, uh, in this range. Yeah, this is a range again. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but if everyone does get to Scheffler like that, you're probably just picking one, right? Like I think people are just yeah. going in here and, and whatever they're rolling with. If it is Keith Mitchell, I mean, you're down to 7K. If it's anybody higher, you're less. If you go down to, I don't know, maybe we'll see here in this next range, that's where people end up. But I guess that's where if you go like Zal, Mitchell, you actually have more than the average above and have to hope that's better than some of those combos that we see up top there. Yeah, certain guys, uh, you know, Black Mass Media says Finau is broken. 
We saw about uh, Sungjae. I haven't seen Sungjae yet, so I can't remember if he's in this field or not. It looks, uh, who knows? I, we wouldn't be to him yet based on pricing, I would imagine, though. So we'll see. I'll have to have a look here and go from there. But just pulling it up this way, um, I could see getting to some of these 9Ks. I can't see a world where something like this is popular, right? Like if you have mm -hmm. something like, uh, let me pull one of them, sorry. Almost that 7,400 average. My, my OCD wants to fix it. Here we go. Uh, let's say I just pick those guys up, bottom up build from the nine Ks. This is where you're looking. And yeah, this is what we're all about. So, you know, I saw you said, listen to us last week and made some cash. If you're looking to get better and not just look for picks and plays and focus on actual process, then get over to ship it nation. Use that code hoop 15. It gets you 15% off or just try a week. Go behind the scenes. You won't get the discord. It's like 14 bucks. Try it out for a week. You'll get all the showdown stuff. You'll get all the main slate. That's for PGA only. But still, check it out, and you'll be able to take the course. That's a full two-hour process course that you can go check it out. So uh, if you are looking to actually get better, that's the stuff we talk about. It's not in the Discord of this guy versus this guy all the time. We're talking about if you do this, then this is what your lineup looks like, and that will turn into that. But remember, consider this, and then putting together all the pieces of the puzzle to try and help people actually get better at the game of DFS. So I think this would be like a unique start. I know on Wednesday I'll have the slate plan out, Lee, but this was – the idea, again, look, you're down to almost that same average that I talked about. Let's say um, Hoagie fits in there. Let's say you go even lower. I mean, now you've got the same average as that, right? You, you got the same average, and you only need to get three golfers in there. And then the one thing I'll say about this, because it transitions us into the next um, setup here of, of Steven Yeager and down, is Yeager, Hostler, Rye, Rogers. These are all guys people love to play. This will also move you off that range. So just of note, just so everybody sees this, how I look at things early in the week, like three guys in here, 7,400. Now I only need three golfers. I'm not saying these guys are better than Hostler, Jaeger, Rye, Rogers. I'm just saying I can see where ownership goes early on in the week. Two reasons. I'll show the, that in a minute. But just to show this here up top, it's also the part to what we talked about, Lee. If you think Clark, Thigala, and Zal or Finau are all overpriced just to match the rankings up with a guy like Scheffler, you're already um, saying you're good with this range anyway. So I think going into the 9K range could be unique because when you go Scotty, and this will segue us, you can fit uh, Aaron Rye and a Hostler and still have 6,500 or Aaron Rye and a Doug Gim and still have almost 6,800. 6, so I think you can see where it's going to be early on already, but just of notes, uh, I do want to see. So um, let's, let's keep it rolling. Let's talk about the rest here. Let's go to... Uh, Steven Yeager down to Jake Knapp. Someone said it. Will, will the field be sleeping on Jake Knapp? Don't sleep on him. We got Steven Yeager down to Jake Knapp. I think this is where we find people going regardless of where they start. It looks early on like these would be some candidates for some of the condensed ownership. What do you think? Yeah, there's a lot of people I like in this range. Uh, a lot of people who have played well here um, previously. Uh, Yeager is gained shots in 75% of the eight rounds that he's played here. Um, so I think he's going to be a good play. Aaron Rye, uh, in his eight rounds, he's played at Memorial Park over the last few years. He's gained shots in 88% of his uh, rounds. Um, so I, I like this range. I think this could be a, a good range. And I don't hate people starting in this range either, if they, they're going to make a, a balanced lineup uh, to start in this uh, range. Hmm, that that would be interesting, I guess, if you if you went through here and just tr did something like whoever, you know what I mean? If you really don't believe in those guys up above and you start putting together some of the guys, maybe Gim can bounce back. I mean, you got, I just can't imagine. Someone said, I think it was our guy, Nick, earlier. Uh, where do you say it? Yeah, when we get the stone on Wednesday, definitely, I mean, we'll get it, we'll get other stuff before then that you could see it. But man, um, just to see how many guys it takes to get to the win equity of, Scheffler here, but yeah, de definitely think that's something. Uh, yeah, Bo in Texas is a thing. I definitely have a Bo Hostler story. I'll probably save that stuff for throughout the week. I did have it posted up, but Bo Hostler, yeah, 8,700 is interesting. So really balanced build would be tough to get to, but I will say, Lee, the one interesting note about that, again, without getting into uh, like who I love here, I don't, I don't really know yet on this range, but I will say what I do think is interesting is back to the same point we keep coming back to. If you're already fading Scheffler, I think it's one of the things that happens where people say, well, then if I'm off him, I automatically have to get some of these guys up top. 
And that's saying that the pricing is correct. We know damn well the pricing is not correct. It never is. There's all kinds. Someone talked about earlier. Look at all the guys that defy the stats. Was Peter Malnati's price right? No. I know I'm being results oriented, but he went out and got the job done. Maybe it was right in your mind coming into the tournament. You're saying that's why he was priced there, but he defied it and went out and beat it. I think when people take this guy in, they know what they're doing. When they take him out, they say, well, if I'm going without him, I got to have someone from Clark, Degala, Zal, or up here. But there's a real case to be made that it's none of Clark, Degala, Zal, or Fina. Zal can lose the putter in a heartbeat. Degala can spray it like crazy in a heartbeat. Clark's been up and down and typically needs the putter rolling as well, but he's obviously great. I'm just saying in this example, if you wanted to move off that those guys, people let the price dictate what you have to do. If you're already moving off Scotty and didn't trust the guys at the top, there's definitely something to be said. And it doesn't have to be the full balance that Lee just talked about. But if you think C. Wu is going to keep firing at pins and make sense, and then you think a couple of these guys make sense, you still have more than the average of up top. There, there, there's nothing that says you have to take it. Yeah, this guy Mondo keeps knowing the stuff today. No law that says you have to take that stuff, man. So look at this. C. Wu, Billy Ho. Um, you know, get Kitty Yama out of Let's say I don't like him. Let's go to uh, Doug Gimp. I know he's got to bounce back for us, but just to say it, like realistically, you still have over that average only two spots to go. And you're telling me you couldn't see a world where one of these guys wins. It's just the way it goes. Now it's probably, then it comes down to two V twos of if, I don't know, if Billy Ho pulls it off, take out C Wu, put in Scotty, take out Doug Gim, and let's get into the seven K range, put someone in. Okay. Now you're kind of in the same zone. So you will have to, con you know, compare your two V twos, but hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for you guys to see not the players again, forget the players that I typed in the thought process of how you're building out your lineups, especially if you're only playing one to three max. So Lee, I'll kick it back to you. Let's move on. Let's go into the seven K range. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Looks like. Maybe it's like 18 or 19. There seems to be a little bit more guys in the 7K range this week. So someone knows the exact number, let me know. But let's talk about the 7K range. We got uh, Thorborn Old Olison down to Thunder Bear, all the way down to Mark Hubbard. No, Vic Victor Perez. Perez. Victor Perez. Yeah. Um, just quickly stepping back to, to the point you made there. If, if you don't play the top four in the uh, pricing, you're going to have some really good differential because I imagine there's going to be a lot of ownership in those top four mm -hmm. and you can have such good differential in, in your total ownership if you, uh, if you miss out on top four completely. So again, it could be a really good play this week. Uh, but yeah, looking at that 7k range, uh, yeah, Joel Damon uh, down there at, at 7,100 uh, with his course form and, and the way his game has picked up recently. I really, really like that play. That's a yeah, good play. And he's uh, gained shots on the field in 88% of the eight rounds he's played here at Memorial Park over the uh, the last few years. So he's probably, well, he's top top of the list for percent of rounds gained where he's uh, gained shots on the uh, field. So really interested to see how he goes uh, this week. Was well, Smalley in this, this range? Um, just messing around here while you're talking. I didn't see Smalley. I saw Svensson. Oh, no, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so uh, he's not in this range. Um, what players have we got here? Ben Griffin's playing well at the minute. Mackenzie Hughes is playing well at the minute. So, so they're all uh, good plays. KHC had a good week last week. Uh, so he, he's always a good play. Uh, Taylor Montgomery as well. Uh, and then you've got Daniel Berger and the, the question mark as to what to do with uh, Daniel Berger because Daniel Berger at that price is a great price, but do you trust him? We'll see. Yeah, this is a good question here too. Like getting back to Agent, he keeps asking about this stuff again. Just check it out. We'll talk about it on here. No problem. It's not like we hide the stuff. I'm just saying like it's the bot. That's the difference. You don't have a process right now. Like you're looking at it about does ownership matter? Like there's a whole segment on that just in the course alone, but you probably have no idea the difference between uh, ownership and product ownership and total ownership and all these different things where, yeah, there's a lot more to it than just saying this works out. And someone said it best. We talk about that. It's not who you play. It's how you play them. There's just lots of different angles on how to approach PGA DFS. And, and there's lots of different ways we see people win. Everybody has their own process, but there's you got to have something. So that's kind of the key starting point. But I was just noticing here, Lee, as looking through it, I guess he's the guy I was looking for. Okay, here we go. Not going to fill it out completely. But let's say Joel Damon and Matt Hughes are popular because we just saw what happened. We know these guys are going to be in the mix. Their pricing didn't really get adjusted 
that much. I know someone said they finally adjusted Hughes' price. It's probably fine, but again, this field, besides Scotty and a couple guys at the top, after what you just saw to Hughes and stuff, I don't think it's that good or bad. I think it's fine. Like, it's just pretty standard. So, um, you know, some will argue, I guess my point would be, some will argue it's still too low when they see that price. Uh, if you don't think it's him, fine. You think he's up there, maybe people go to Ben Griffin. My point is, you can get to a lineup like this, plug Scotty, and have 6,100 left. You just need basically one 6K guy to come through. And I'm using Hostler in Texas, if that's where people are going to go, if it's both of them, if it's Griffin, and if it's Lee, who just played well, that people saw on Sunday. If people go to Luke List because they like him, Cam Davis, whatever it might be, you can easily still get there and get away with it. Again, you don't even need to touch the 6K range at all or below with Scotty Scheffler. So we're back to the same thing. That's why I said the pricing's fine. It just doesn't really fully do it when they set it up the rest of the way like this. And that's fine. We, we work with what we have. I'm just telling you, that's how I feel about it. It's how I continue to see it where it, I get it. It just, there's, there's nothing that's really saying you got to move down the board unless there's something down the board that you like. And I know people say, well, Malnati last week, he got the job done in one. Yeah, it happens. But what was his ownership? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's tough and it's still surprising. I wonder, I didn't check it. This, we don't usually do this on this show, but while we got, Plenty of time here. Only 35 minutes in. I'm going to have a quick look. I just want to see for like the 200K last week. I'm not sure if you looked at it, but if you go back and see who won the 200K. Go back. The pitch and putt up top. Man, this is always the hassle going back and trying to find this stuff. But all the contests, where was it? I don't know. Does it, do people know it there? Was Peter Malnati in the winning lineup in the main 200K to first tournament. I know you'd think it's obvious because he won. I'm just curious if he was in enough lineups and then a lineup that actually had the rest around it. And I, for some reason. Is this the tournament where Gary came second? I'm just thinking like last week in general, like if I just go last week, classic, it just take it forever. I'm going to use the tabs now to get to it. He was 0.4% owned. Someone said, let's just see here. Congrats to Ryan Lama. Got the job done up top. He did have a Peter Malnati lineup at 0.39%. He had it perfectly with basically uh, Xander, Cam Young, Mac Hughes, but it was a it was a five of six with Burns. So, you know, that's another difference maker where it can get through that way. Second place, lost by 2.5 and did not have Malnati. So it's just one of those things. Again, I go looking for it all you want. If you find the diamond in the rough, it happened to be in that lineup. So it's whatever for the example. I'm just saying that's where people don't quite understand it. That just because you find the diamond in the rough, he won by 2.5 and got away with a five of six. You need that to fall in your favor. If not at 0.39%, that's already such a limited number of lineups, even in the largest of fields. And then you need him to sort of go on and be there. Yeah, we just looked it up literally. So uh, we got it. Let's keep it going. Let's go down into this uh, 6K range. I guess I'll, I'll do sevens quickly. Just looking at it though. Like, I mentioned uh, some thoughts on now, but Akshay for sure looks like he could pick up some steam. I think he played fine. Cage Lee looks good. He played fine. Berger would be a guy, if you really quickly, I wanted you to run through this one. He'll pop in the course fit rankings, right, Lee? But only because of the past stuff, typically, right? Like, obviously, yeah. it's not course history rankings, but some of that stuff gets brought into the mix because of the factor that the, uh, you know, the way he would fit it if he was on his A game. So that's just to be said on someone like him. I know we had Bud Colley stuff with that before, all that. You mentioned Joel Damon, Svensson, all that. It's not recent form rankings either. That is correct. So uh, let's keep it moving. Let's go into the 6K range. I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me to see how many guys, but I'm guessing if it's like 20, 30, 45, I mean, it's got to be 100 guys plus down here. So what are we doing in this 6K range? Or who are, let's do it this way. Who are some of the guys in the 6K range that stand out for you? Uh, Alex Smalley. He's uh, he's played well, very well here. Um, he finished fourth last year and 15th the year before. Uh, and 75% of his eight round, rounds around here, he's gained strokes on the uh, field. So he looks like an excellent price at uh, 6,800. Mm -hmm. uh, and then looking further down... Can, can you go back to Malnati? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, if he's playing well, if he's got the uh, the form, which he certainly has, and he's only priced at 6,700, then yeah, absolutely. Uh, Phillips played well last week. 
he might be worth uh, another go this week. McIntyre's finding his feet now on the uh, PGA Tour, and he's only 6,800. He's a much better player than he's um, than he's shown uh, on the PGA Tour. He, he, he will come good, uh, and he's starting to find his uh, feet now. Um, looking further down, Alexander Bjork is a, is a solid player. He keeps making uh, cuts. Yeah, I think I think this would be one case too to talk about because uh, I'll give you one example, and I'm not sure I'm gonna go pull it without giving it all away just to look. But I've seen examples like this in the past. Someone mentioned Baddeley, uh, Ryan Moore, those guys. But I can tell you right now, if you go to the projection sites, our, our projections, other projections, all that stuff, Grayson Sig is going to pop at 6,500. Right? You're, you just know that he's going to pop because he does. That's just how it works. Uh, if you look at him making cuts, three of his last four. T19 in Mexico, only missed the cut at the players, but it was like on the number and it's obviously a tougher track, stronger field, all of that. But sometimes a guy like Ryan Moore, who you would never look at twice, but now if he pops in the course fit rankings and you see some signs coming in, this is where something like that can be a huge pivot for single entry, three max, whatever it might be, because we have reason to believe that a piece of the puzzle says it's okay projections probably not even that far off and you actually have some form to say that i could go off of that uh, somebody else mentioned ryan palmer another example 6200 it wasn't the best here like he just made the cut but it's you know a couple of cuts but i know for sure i was looking at him in round four in showdown that's part of the the benefit of playing all the slates and looking at showdown slates i liked ryan palmer in round four he didn't come through he shot a 70 but it's not the worst round there was some scoring things like that but the point is down at 6,200 in Texas, if he pops in something else, the stone, the course fit rankings, any of the things we offer at shipitnation.com, then that's a guy that I could say, maybe I could find a way in on. And then that's where you do it, right? Chandler Phillips, you mentioned, I think he's going to be fine just because people will play him off of last week. Smalley, who you mentioned, but I guess that would be the thing. If who do, who do you think people trust the most here? Let's say it's Phillips because they just saw it. And even if it's it's probably not because people never go back to the guy that just won. There's other guys, but like Amal Nadi, you have yeah. 9K remaining. So just in reverse now, because we can always go back up. We just can't go down to cheat. It's looking at it from this perspective. We're not going to look ahead in the pricing. Whoever it is you pick, if you can get behind a couple of 6K guys, you are now way above that 7,400 average we saw when it was just Scotty. You only need three more golfers and you have almost $7,900 left per golfer. So that's where you get into, okay, I like Bo Hostler. Now you got four golfers, including Scotty only need two more back to your original average of when it is just Scotty only. So keep that in mind. If you can get behind a couple of these six K guys, that's how, you know, Scotty's going to get popped up even more than what we probably think. So I definitely think that's an interesting way to look at it. Anybody else here in these six K, uh, in these six K guys, you want to talk about Lee? Yeah, well, I think Novak and Ryder are quite popular players, aren't they, when they're down in uh, this range, so so they'll probably get good ownership. Yeah. Um, Matt Wallace as well, he's, he's always a, a popular play uh, that, that tends to do well. Uh, Cam Champ had a good week last week, and he's only at 6,400. Yeah, he did. Uh, he, he, he's, he showed something again there. I was just looking at something else, but I think um, one thing I will note then I'm seeing this as part of what the first look is for, not really who we like and play, but as much as just trying to dissect what others are going to do and how we can get an early jump on the week is one thing I will note. It wasn't this way. Always. I know that I talked about this the last few weeks. We've had this 5k pricing about how the seven K's got sort of cheated and they just left certain guys out there. Well, this is one thing I will say this week, as much as they added a few more in that seven K range. I think this is one of the better upper 6K ranges we've seen. So the, I will say like, uh, you know, someone mentioned it, but you did already. You mentioned Bjork. The chat mentioned Stevens. You mentioned Champ. There's cases to be made for this 6,400 and up range. So you can almost just treat it as a one giant 7K range, I think, and call that your pool of what you're playing out of and then pick your guys within it that you like. Because I definitely think that is another angle to keep in mind here. It, it's a big time setup for. Uh, a better upper 6K range than what we've seen in the past where it was kind of just guys thrown in there. This actually looks a little bit stronger to me, Lee, and there's definitely more cases to be made for these yeah. guys, especially when you got last week's winner 
there, whether it was a fluke or not, whatever you want to say, guy's been grinding forever. My point being, and great interview, by the way, after love to see that just about the grind in general, his wife, his caddy, people like that, that are there for him through the dark times that it is. So I love seeing stuff like that, but just to say it, there, there's other guys. We, we mentioned a lot of names to give you a better feel for how you can treat this. And I'm sure you can continue it on in this lower range. If people wanted to get behind Ryan Palmer, who we just talked about, Bud Colley, Chan Kim, Matty Schmid, Carl Yuan. There, there's other guys. This is a better 6K range is my final point from what we'll say in the past. G give me your take on this one too. Uh, Mondo, you've been awesome today. Appreciate all your insight and questions and thoughts in the chat. Why does everyone think you have to play? He's talking about PGA DFS. It's really, it's anything, but he related it to PGA DFS in finish position. Um, one note I'll say about your statement, it's not only finish position. I mean, in some tournaments, you could have four guys in the top 10 and the winner, and you're going to do very well. And usually the best, but I'm saying also scoring matters, which makes it more um, high variant, high variance when you're talking about uh, the Eagles and the streaks and the all four under 70 bonuses and things. But to your general point, yes, good point. And I'll bring up something on in a second, but I definitely am curious, Lee, your take on just um, filling out the salary entirely and when there's a good time not to maybe. Yeah, so, so you don't have to uh, fill out the entire salary. But, I mean, a, a player that's 7,000 is generally going to do better than a player at 6,200. Uh, so I guess the reason you go as far down is to find value. But if you've got that money left over, then generally a, a 7,000 guy's got more of a chance of making a cut than a 6,000 guy. So, so that's why you want to get as close to zero as possible. Well, you don't have to. It, it, it's more important to, to get the ownership right and, and things like that. Um, I think when I'm setting my lineups, uh, so I, I build 150 lineups and I have the price go as low as 49,400 uh, to give me that leeway and, and to give me the ability to build different lineups uh, to other people. Because if, if you're going to win a big tournament, for example, like the Minimax, then, then you are going to have to have lineups that are different to other lineups and that have still got a chance of uh, winning it. So, yeah, it's, it's a balance between the, the total price spent and the ownership for me. And we got time. We still got some time and I don't care that much about the 5Ks. We will go through it for you guys, but I just want to say a couple things on this one because a few things came up and that I thought about. One is, uh, first off, it's the part of it's the Peter Malnati effect, meaning what I brought up earlier. He did happen to end up in the 200K winning lineup, okay, at 0.39%. Almost the perfect storm, though, to have him with four other guys that did well and then a miscut in Sam Burns on a week where it was 1%, 6 of 6 in some cases. So it's like, yes, a 5 of 6 can win. And when you have a 0.39% winner, you can win. It's the same thing when people say, oh, I always see the optimal lineup that people post out there is like 44,000 or 47,000. Well, if you just try and build those lineups every single week, it's going to be tough to figure that all out. So it's no problem to leave money on the table. I'm just saying you do fall a little bit into the trap of it's not that a $7,500 guy is better than a $6,500 guy. And you can do that. Leave that thousand bucks on the table. It's just that you can still find your way to the top other ways. And that would be one note I would make right away is that it's because not a lot of people are doing it. So with that said, our guy earlier that we talked about here, let me, uh, let me go back to the, the tweet. Where was it at? Share this tab. I think we had it here, but anyway, uh, our guy, Matt, Q Matt, he won the 50K in Showdown. And I'm going to use this in Showdown. It probably works even better there, but it's the same type of concept that I'm going to go into for the final one in a second. Then we'll get to the 5K range. In Showdown, it is insane to me. Like people were giving him shit for this. And I know he's out there watching, helping out, and I appreciate it. But just to say that, you know, put, help push the case. But saying that the lineup is absolute shit when you're leaving five grand on the table in Showdown because any scrub in that lineup could have been Rory McElroy. This is in my, Matt's my buddy. I talked to him. He's very sharp. He's way up there in the rankings. He plays volume. He wins a lot. It, it's he's great. And I'm just saying though, I asked him and I, I wanted to get his thoughts on. It. I'm trying to learn and get better too. And it's insane. This is this was the greatest thing he brought back to me. Obviously, you'd rather have Roy McElroy than David Skins. But in a in a game like Showdown, that is as high variance as possible, where everyone is only going to play the same course at in some cases different times so you could even have it like hit that day there was a wave advantage so there was that as well it's could he still have went rory yes but it's just as likely rory can have a bad day there's odds involved that maybe it's not as likely but you know what i'm saying where he's okay with it it's already high variance and it's insane to me because in nfl showdown 
I've won money playing Jawan Jennings over Debo Samuel. And for those that get it, all it's saying is it's a top tier wide receiver on the team that's going to get the playing time versus a guy that might not. But I do it and leave six grand salary on the table, hoping that Jawan Jennings gets in and makes a splash play and beats that guy. In golf, though, they that's like a playing time battle. That's like he may not even see near the snaps this guy does, but I'm still willing to do it to get unique. You don't need to do it to get to you as unique in golf. But I will say they're playing the exact same course, the exact same amount of holes, the exact same amount of chances at bonuses, upside, streaks. And then there actually is a favor, a, a piece that goes in their favor because it could be that they have better weather, better wave draw, better timing, better setup. Start on the back nine where you could have a better chance at a streak. Like there is actual things that lean in their favor. So I wouldn't just write it off. I get the take. Yes, I'd rather have Rory too. I'm not against the person that's, you know, other people out there saying this stuff. I'm just saying I also get Matt's take, and I think it's really interesting. And just a note on that, Lee, is if you don't have Scotty winning, if you have Scotty in a lineup this week, you need the other five guys to come through in some way, shape, or form for you to probably win a tournament. Again, you could have a crazy low 6-6. Six six. I get all I'm just saying generalities here. If you think those other five guys come through, though, and Scotty, and yeah, Nick brings up a good point. Also, Rory's a loser. A fucking loser, as, the, as the, our guy says, Degenerate 75. I'll throw one out there for, just for him. F-bomb. No F-counters on Mondays. First look, though. But I will say, if you think Scotty lineups, which are going to have a bunch of different ways to get there, I get it. But if you don't have Scotty doing as well and scoring as many points as Zhao or Siwoo or whatever it is in your lineup, can you not just leave all the money on the table this week and take your guy over top of him? Because if the Scotty lineup was to be the one to find the top, it's the same five dudes that need to come through back to Mondo's point earlier. You need five guys to come through with whoever or six guys total, but I'm saying in those Scotty lineups, you need the other five to do it. So if you don't have Scotty and you, for some reason have Siwoo over him, if you even found, I don't know what the matchups are going to be out there, but let's say you find a Siwoo Scotty matchup. It's going to pay decent, but I'm saying if you're trying to go for something top heavy, why would you not just try that and leave the money to me at that point? It's fine. I'm not looking for that. I'm just saying if there was ever a spot to do it, that would be the spot that makes sense to me because the Scotty lineup still needs the other five to come through. If you've got someone beating Scotty, why are the, those other five not still fine unless you're really significantly upgrading someone, but you obviously like them enough that I think it would be, be just fine to go without that and, and try it the other way. So anything else to add on this before we go to uh, the 5K range quick? No, nope. I think you summed that up perfectly. Okay. Um, when there is not a perceived, you still, do you refer maybe a Illini fan, my guy, just, if you're asking me if I still build in sets when there's no weather advantage, absolutely. And I've talked about this ad nauseum just to say it like it's, I, people confuse wave stacking with weather wave stacking. One has the word weather in front of it. And it's not against you, just facts, not being negative, just saying like, that's the truth. A way, you can wave stack anytime you want. You're stacking who's in what wave. Weather stacking, weather wave stacking is when there's a weather angle or what people are perceiving as an edge to be able to stack it due to weather. So I'm just saying, like I've talked about this plenty, but you can stack a wave, no problem. And what you're going to naturally do is get off some of the chalk. Some weeks you'll see that the PM, the PM wave, no weather at all, but the PM wave has all the chalky guys. So guess what? If you just build some AM PM lineups that week to get different, you are going to have unique lineups just on that because everyone's playing at least two or three guys in the PM for the most part. Again, putting some generalities on things today, but definitely just saying it, that that is one thing you could do to avoid it. So uh, I like that question. Do you prefer to build in sets when no more? Yeah, that, that's what I just said. So I think we're on the same page there um, for that. Ben makes a great point. Um, when it's not a super strong field. It goes back to my Scotty point. He just is glaringly the spot this week that I would bring it up. You can still do it in seven to nine K. Like, like you said, other fields, these guys are just getting brought up. Like if you, if you were starting their lineups, Scotty Finau, what would be the difference between starting at Scotty right now? Honestly, Keith Mitchell or Bo Hostler or Jagger or whatever. Like it, like Finau has not been it lately. I'm not saying he won't be this week or where I get to by the end of the week. I'm just saying, you, what you're saying is the same thing, and then it gets even more uh, enhanced when it's like, okay, do you want Kitayama at 8,100, or do you want a guy down here like Novak who's been crushing it? It's up to you. I don't know the answer. I'm just saying 
is there really that much of a difference? Probably not. So I'm fine with leaving more money on the table on these weeks where you can get confused because you have a three to one guy at the top, but there's lots of spots within those lineups where I'm not going to fill it out 6,600. Why couldn't it be instead of Luke list here, you drop down and get your two favorite guys in the mid sixes, right? Even though you have 7,600, that's 1100 on the table. What's the real difference going to be between some of those guys? So I definitely think that's a great point that you brought up as well. Let's finish this thing out, Lee. Let's go to the 5k range. Just give me Two or three names you see down here that you might have interest in, and then we'll move it on from there. Uh, Chef Reevy uh, ranks out very well in the uh, course fit ranking. Uh, he's down at 5,800. Uh, you've got Adam Long, who has had great success at this course. Um, in the 10 rounds he's played here over the last three years, he has gained shots on the field 80% of the time, uh, and he's down all the way at uh, 5,300. Um, so that they're two names that, that stick out straight away. I don't, is Ben Taylor in this? Uh, yeah, Ben Taylor's down there, isn't he? At five thousand one hundred. I think he had a good finish here last year. I think he finished third here last year. Um, so yeah, a few names down there. But other names will come out as the week goes on, and we start putting all these pieces of the puzzle together that we've got on the site with the course fit rankings, the tier rankings, all the other stats that come out, the form. When we start putting all those together, then then some of these other names will uh, will start uh, popping. Uh, just to answer Andrew's question, because it's a good one, if it wasn't clarified, that's for showdown. That's why it was a bigger conversation, because it was saying that this lineup was absolute shit for leaving five grand on the table. But his argument was in showdown, and everyone just classified it against David Skins, because he ended up being the one that won him the tournament with the last birdie putt. But that's just, that's results of the last putt. But yes, Anybody in his lineup could have technically been Rory McIlroy, and he just didn't want to play Rory. He was fine with the guys he had. They were all projected a few points off. It wasn't crazy. You're already not going to be worried about as much about that. It was like a, I don't know, probably a 12 to 15 point projection. But in showdown, it just doesn't matter in one single round. It's not the same. Shit changes on a dime. It's like, it's important. It's a piece of the puzzle, but you can get away with it. And that's how you have an extreme setup especially if you're stacking a wave or something like that so i definitely think that was the reason it got brought up why did someone tell me about campos today already i've already heard about this guy um yeah i mean 5200 before four on cuts if he didn't have one bad hole yeah like you can look at all that stuff there, there's lots of guys you can make a case for down here i will say to your chess point though i'm gonna build some he's number one we'll give away the one guy in the uh the course fit rankings the one guy we'll give away Let's see if I can edit it here. Sneak it in and only show one. Ches Revy. Ches Revy. But this would go with what we were saying, right, Lee? You're looking at the guy, show nothing forever. He fits the course rankings. The course fit rankings have nothing to do with this 12th place finish last week. L overall, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying, though. But why you may feel a little bit better about him is because you're saying not only does he fit in the course fit rankings, but he showed some signs of life, including a closing round 68 last week. D even at 5,800, even with that finish, do you really think people are loading up on Chaz Revy this week? No, but Ship it Nation members will have plenty of lineups with him in there and opportunities to get more of him because then they'll play 5 to 10% and be able to have enough where if they get the other stuff right, they'll get paid off. You mentioned Adam Long. He's a tougher sell, right? There there's not as much going on with him. Who was the third guy you mentioned? Ben Taylor? Uh, ben Taylor, yeah. Tough sell. Again, could they snap out of it? And that's why? Yes. But when people see all these cuts, that's going to be a tough sell. So I think that's the thing. Myself, Kenny Kim, will have it covered for you guys more on the Fantasy Golf Degenerates tonight. We'll go through more of that stuff for you. Lee, is there anything else you wanted to talk about here before you get out of here? Let the people know where they can find you, and then I'll get us back to, back to the house here. We'll be out of here. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at DK Golf Bargains or Lee Aldrich. If you search either, it will come up. But that's my uh, handle on there. Um, yeah, I'm quite active on on Twitter, so worth a follow. It's, it's not just the DFS uh, content I put on there, but every week there's my my betting picks for the week and my first round leader uh, bets for the week as well. And they've been going well. They're they're largely based on course fit and yeah, uh, get some good priced uh, first round leader bets on there. So yeah, go check me out. Yeah, definitely follow Lee on Twitter. That's where I started. He's been in the tidbits well before he ever came over to help us out here at Ship It Nation. But appreciate you stepping up, hopping on with me here this week, Lee. This was fun. We'll do it again soon. If you guys do want to get in on the action, remember the weekly 
Only 14 bucks. If you want to check it out, you do not get Discord and there's no discount code. You're not, not going to save two bucks. Like it's it's 14 bucks. Get in. If you want to use the code HOOP15, you can get the monthly. It works out to around a dollar a day. You can get the annual. It works out to $5 per event, but that will cover you guys for everything there. And then I saw it. I got to give this one credit on the way out. Uh, our guy, Rin Shepard. I know it's sad. No EVR, no Sungjae e either. So we're good. Maybe we can make some money this week for once. But, uh, you know, this one here, I love, Andrew. Can't spell Reevee without EVR. So there you go, my man, Rin. You can use Reevee this week, and you'll we'll be feeling it. Ben's going to bet him, 275. I'm going with first round leader when we hop off here before I forget. But Lee, thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you all. That's going to do it for this one. For Lee, for myself, Toe Tag, and Tambo, let's ship it.